Good morning. Welcome home to Trinity, a place of hearing the gospel and knowing God's family. Uh, before we get into today's announcements and everything, we're going to take just a few minutes and watch this month's Wells Connection. Hi, I'm Wells President Mark Schrader. As the president of our Synod, I have the privilege of participating in mission work all over the globe. Seeing God at work in a totally different cultural setting can be a life-changing experience, invigorating our sense of purpose as Christians. A new program offered by Wells is designed to bring those experiences to lay people. It's called Mission Journeys. These members of St. Paul Lutheran are planning a trip, a trip with a purpose. In a few weeks' time, they'll travel to Arizona to work at the Wells Apache Mission. The experience, which lasts about a week, is part of a new synod-wide program called Mission Journeys. I think one of the really big blessings of Mission Journeys is it allows lay people to be involved in a way that they might not otherwise feel they can be involved. Um, it gives them the opportunity to connect personally and firsthand with one of our mission fields. Jill During, a lay person, is coordinating this particular mission journey. A reminder that it's not just pastors and teachers who have a role to play in reaching out with the gospel. We've had a number of teams that have gone where we've had lay people actually be the team leaders and the called workers have walked alongside of them um, and allowed them to be the leaders. And this is just beneficial for our churches as a whole. In advance of the journey, several workshops like this help participants prepare for the culture they will be visiting and the mission work that needs to be done. We're not down there just to take pictures. We're not down there to just say hi. We're down there to help. We're down there to be a team and then to do whatever work they want us to do. The mission fields themselves and the congregations are, are coming to us and saying, this is what we need. And we're trying to match up a team um, to those needs. The group based at St. Paul came to the Apache mission partly to help with preparations for the mission's 125th anniversary. Since St. Paul was also celebrating 125 years, it was an opportunity to see the parallels, how God's work is the same despite cultural differences. It's a great opportunity for me to be reminded um, that heaven is gonna be filled with brothers and sisters of all races, nations, language, tribes, and people. Once back at St. Paul, the team made plans to connect with their congregation, to report on the experience, and encourage other lay people to consider similar mission journeys. Because you have connections within your congregation and they're going to see what you did and hopefully hear the excitement and the joy and the love that you had doing this, that it will grow that within your congregation too. God willing, they're actually talking about maybe sending a mission journey team themselves. While some mission journeys travel to distant world mission locations, other opportunities are available closer within the United States. So there's a mission journey opportunity to fit the resources of almost any group. Speaking of mission work, as that uh, video did, um, we have a drive called Shoes for Souls uh, for shoes uh, in mission fields, uh, whether brand new shoes or slightly used. Um, the next few weeks we're taking, uh, taking those uh, in. There's more information about that in the service folder. Also, um, as we uh, are now in the season of Lent, Lent is a, a part of the church here, and you see the, the purple um, cloth up there. It's a time when we reflect on Jesus' suffering, for our sins and then reflect on our own sins and why Jesus paid for them and what he did to pay for them. So we have the, our special Wednesday Lenten services to help us focus on that. They're 3.30 and 7 o'clock. 
And um, because of those special services, but then also looking ahead to Holy Week and the special services we have then, ushers, we are in need of a few more ushers, about a dozen or so. There's some open slots. There's a uh, sign-up sheet on the, one of the tables in the entryway. So ushers, if you can, uh, take a look at that and sign up if you can. Um, also, starting this Wednesday, we, uh, for the men's bow class at 6 o'clock, we're going to look at that... Um, yes, what, 2004 movie um, Mel, by Mel Gibson, The Passion of the Christ. We're going to look at that movie and, and watch segments and then look what the Bible says um, and, and compare the two. And uh, it's going to be a really great study. So 6 o'clock uh, Wednesday mornings here in the Fellowship Hall. All men, you are invited to that. Tonight, great opportunity to hear some good music. Wisconsin Lutheran College Choir is coming through. 7 o'clock concert. They'll be here at Trinity. Um, if you are one of the families that are hosting some of these college students, thank you very much for doing that. You can uh, pick up your um, students after the concert tonight um, and bring them back, I believe it's by 8.30 tomorrow morning. Um, originally, they wanted us, to, uh, the host, to provide a sack lunch. You don't have to do that. That will be taken care of here at church. Just need to give them a, a good breakfast, which could be as simple as a piece of toast or cereal, or whatever you want to do for them. Um, and then the last thing for announcements, uh, I have a letter here from Tim Miller. Tim Miller is who uh, we've called at Illinois Lutheran Schools to serve as our executive director. Now that's a new term for us. Um, this position we call the superintendent, but uh, the position itself has been, a little, has been tweaked a little bit, and, and all the academic, the day-to-day -day operations for the school has been taken out of it, and really the focus then for this position is, is outside the school walls. Um, so really keeping us focused on where we're going vision-wise, but then working with alumni, working with donors and things like that. So uh, uh, Tim Miller, we've called for this executive director position and he's asked for this letter to be read. Dear partners in ministry at Illinois Lutheran Schools, I received the call to serve as executive director of ILS. I will prayerfully examine the needs of your ministry together with the needs here at Star of Bethlehem where he's serving in New Berlin, Wisconsin so that I may make a well-informed decision. I'm convinced that our God will provide for both ministries, regardless of the decision that I make. It is this central truth which provides peace for me during this time of deliberation. Our God is good and amazing. Psalm 31, verse 14 says, But I trust in you, Lord. I say, you are my God. Please join with me as I pray for the Lord to keep me focused on the good of his kingdom and where I might best carry out his work. Also, Please feel free to reach out to me as I learn about the wonderful ministry there at ILS. May our Lord's will be done and all done to his glory. Serving our Savior, Tim Miller. So certainly keep Mr. Miller in your prayers. Um, as far as today, we are beginning a new sermon series called Turning Point. So I'll talk more about that later. But specifically today, we're going to look at uh, Jesus being tempted uh, by the devil. 40 days, and in fact, actually, his being tempted for 40 days is where the idea of 40 days for the season of Lent comes from. So with the idea of temptation and overcoming temptation, um, let's begin today with a prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you defeated the devil. You overcame his temptations. And so, Lord, in victory, we ask you to bless us and be with us here today as we worship you. Strengthen us, equip us through your word, that when we fight temptation, we may do so and turn away from it all to your glory and only because of you. We ask this in your name. Amen. The entire order of worship is printed in the service folder. It's also going to be up on the screens. You can use whichever one you want. Our first song, Just As I Am. Thank you. 
Please stand for worship. We begin today in the name of our triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May his name be praised among us this morning. Amen. As we come before our holy God, let us join together humbly to confess our sins. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin, for a faithless worry and selfish pride for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do, you should cast me away from your presence forever. O oh Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus. Yeah. 
My dear friends in Christ, because of Christ, because he took our sins, because he had mercy on us and took our sins and died for them on the cross, because he rose triumphant from the grave, I get to tell you, all your sins are forgiven in the name of our triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin Lost without hope and no place to begin Your love made a way to let mercy come in When death was arrested and my life began Ash was redeemed, only beauty remains My orphan heart was given a name morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. When death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made me chains I'm a prisoner no more my shame was a ransom we faithfully bore he canceled my debt and he called me his friend when death was arrested in my Washes over me. You have made me new. Now life begins with you. It's your endless love pouring down on us. You have made us new. Now life begins with you. Savior displayed on a criminal's cross. Darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost. But then Jesus rose with our freedom in That's when death was arrested in my life.
sometimes in life, um, we, we have a tendency to downplay seriousness, downplay the reality of temptation, and what falling into that temptation, what sin really is and its consequences are. Our first scripture reading shows us that is wrong. It's from Joshua chapter 7. Early the next morning, Joshua had Israel come forward by tribes, and Judah was taken. The clans of Judah came forward, and he took the Zerahites. He had the clans of the Zerahites come forward by families, and Zimri was taken. Joshua had his family come forward by man by man, and Achan, son of Carmi, the son of Zimri, the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah, was taken. Then Joshua said to Achan, My son, give glory to the Lord, the God of Israel, and give him the praise. Tell me what you have done. Do not hide it from me. Achan replied, It is true. I have sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel. This is what I've done. When I saw the plunder, in the plunder, a beautiful robe from Babylonia, 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold weighing 50 shekels, I coveted them and took them. They were hidden in the ground inside my tent with the silver underneath. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran to the tent, and there it was, hidden in his tent with the silver underneath. They took the things from the tent, brought them to Joshua and all the Israelites, and spread them out before the Lord. Then Joshua, together with all Israel, took Achan, son of Zerah, the silver, the robe, the gold wedge, his sons and daughters, his cattle, donkeys, and sheep, his tent, and all that he had, to the valley of Achor. Joshua said, Why have you brought this trouble on us? The Lord will bring trouble on you today. And all Israel stoned him. And after they had stoned the rest, they burned them. Over Achan they heaped up a large pile of rocks, which remains to this day. Then the Lord turned from his fierce anger. Therefore, that place has been called the Valley of Achor ever since. This is God's word. Now in very sharp contrast to that, we see in our next scripture reading, which is from Hebrews chapter 4, we see Jesus. Jesus, who here is called a high priest. Take a look. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. This is the word of our Lord. Let's join in singing the the next song as indicated, Man of Sorrows. Man of Sorrows, Lamb of God, by his own betrayed, the sin of man and Breath of God has been on Jesus laid. Silent as he stood accused, beaten, mocked, and scorned, and Father's will, he took a crown of thorns. Oh, that bronched cross, my salvation, where you love poured out over me. Now my soul cries. Oh 
Today we're going to look at Luke chapter 4, and the words are not printed on, uh, printed, they're not on the screen, they are printed in the service folder here. This is Jesus himself dealing with temptation. It says, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the desert, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to them, I will give you all authority and splendor, for it has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. So if you worship me, it will be, given, it will, it will be yours. Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered, it says, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. Today, we're beginning this sermon series entitled, Turning Points. Turning points in a person's life are are those moments where you make a decision, and and that turning point has a lasting effect sometimes on the rest of your life. We all have these kind of turning points. Maybe for you it was, 
It was that time when a coach or a teacher said a word of encouragement and it made a true difference in your life. Or, or maybe for you, as you read a book and this book just captivated you and changed you. Or maybe it was a job you had. Or maybe it was a, a paper you were assigned in school. Or it was a date or you know, the birth of a child. We all have these moments in our lives, turning points. And of course, the, the greatest turning point of all history was that song we just sang, when death was arrested, when, when Jesus left the tomb empty. That changed everything. But there are also other turning points in Jesus' life, and that's what we're looking at today. When Jesus was tempted, he turned away. He turned away from the temptations of the devil. And so we actually need to take a little moment here and talk about the devil here in church. We need to be very clear about the devil because according to a survey by Barna, 59% of Christians in America that's 59%, not of Americans, but of American Christians. 59% say the devil is not real. That is just a, a symbol of evil. The Bible does not agree with that. The devil is real. Uh, very simply, he is an angel, an angel who fell away, who, who sinned and, and rebelled against God. The Bible says in 2 Peter, God did not spare angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell. And the book of Revelation talks specifically about one of those fallen angels, the devil. It says, for that great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. So the devil is, is an angel who, who sinned against God, and, and he has other fallen angels with him. The devil is real. And, and we, hear, we heard here in this reading from Luke chapter 4, he tempted Jesus directly. Now, that's probably not his normal way of doing things. He, he usually uses a lot of other people or situations in our life, but here he directly tempts Jesus. Do you understand? The devil is powerful, right? He's an angel. But he's not all powerful. There are limits placed on him. If you've ever read the book of Job in the Bible, you know exactly what I mean. The devil. He goes for Jesus himself, and, and we'll get to the specific temptations in just a moment. But first, I want to try a little exercise here this morning, okay? So I want everyone to take a deep breath in and breathe out. Do that again. Breathe in and breathe out. Okay, why do we do that? If you breathe... That means you have been, you are, and you will be tempted. It is a fact of life. You breathe, you're tempted. Jesus was no different. So let's take a look at these temptations specific that the devil threw at Jesus. The first temptation was one to, to turn away from God. Look again what Luke chapter 4 says. For 40 days... Jesus was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell the stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone. So for 40 days, he's out in the desert and being tempted, and he says he's hungry. He, yes, he was. But you have to wonder right away, how is he even still alive? He didn't eat for over a month. Well, remember, Jesus is not just human. Last week, we saw very clearly at the transfiguration 
He's also God. That's how he was still alive. But being human, he is extremely hungry. And the devil knows how to use that. Now, just eating is not a bad thing. I mean, you've got to take care of your body. So how is this really a temptation to sin? Do you remember how Jesus got in the desert in the first place? Look again what it says in Luke. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan, where he was baptized, by the way, and was led by the Spirit in the desert. The Holy Spirit was leading him there in the desert. God was leading him there, and the devil tempted him to turn away from God's leading, to turn away from God. See, the, the devil's really good at what he does. Appetite. Appetite for things is a big driving force with temptation. Uh, appetite for, for food. Appetite for, for rest. Appetite for sex. Appetite for this. A, appetite for whatever it is. It's just you want more and more of it. And that is a huge driving factor for temptation. And, and the devil, he, he, he knows it. And he uses it. Now, another thing he, he, he does here is, is um, he does basically what he did in the very beginning, the Garden of Eden. There he asked Eve, did God really say that? He, he planted that seed of doubt, and that's exactly what he's trying here with Jesus. If you are the Son of God. The devil doesn't have to convince us that he's right. He just has to get us wondering and doubting. The first temptation was to turn away from God. The, the second, to turn away from pain. Look again what happened in Luke. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor for it's been given to me and I can give it to anyone I want to. So if you worship me, it will be, be yours. Jesus answered, it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. This temptation was really to, to take the easy way out. To go and skip right to being king of kings, lord of lords, ruler of all things, and skip what was in between. To, to jump over the pain, the, the sorrow, the, the being whipped, being uh, abused, being abandoned by his friends being crucified on the cross. The devil does that with us, doesn't he? To just jump over and skip to the fun part. To, to go to the immediate gratification. He does that a lot with us. Pretty much every sexual temptation is that. Ignoring the consequences of your actions and just go to that immediate gratification. Spending more money than you take in is the same thing. The devil's really good with this. Just skip over the pain and go for that immediate pleasure. The third temptation was to turn away from the truth. Luke chapter 4 says, The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered. It says, do not put the Lord your God to the test. So did you catch here what the devil did differently from the other times? He actually used God's word. He quoted the Bible. You see, the devil knows the Bible really well. Jesus, God says that he'll take care of you. So prove it. Do you really think God will take care of you? The devil does the exact same with us, doesn't he? He, he uses God's word to get to us. 
God says that he will bless us and take care of us. So, so why are bad things happening to me? Well, it must be that I'm doing something wrong, or maybe God doesn't actually keep his promises. The devil does that. He plants those seeds of doubt. He uses God's word against us. He's, he's really good at this. So, what can we learn by looking at these temptations? What, what, what can we learn about learning to turn away from these temptations? Because we see ourselves in these, don't we? You know, the, the devil came after Jesus when he was at a low point. He, he was starving. He was physically, emotionally weak. He was drained. And he does the same thing with us, right? When we are down and down and we are just drained, the devil comes out after us even more so then. Kind of like a lion, right? A lion hunting goes after the weakest and easiest animal. He is really good at what he does. Think of it this way, right? How long has the devil been practicing tempting people? Thousands of years. If, if I practice my violin every day for 50 years, I'd be pretty awesome. <laughs> the devil's not been practicing 50 years. He's been doing it for thousands. And he's good at what he does. But Jesus is better. The devil may be powerful, but Jesus is even more powerful. Jesus turned away from the devil every time he tempted Jesus. Jesus turned away from the devil and, and defeated him. Ultimately, on the cross. Because there on the cross, Jesus, he, he paid for all our sins, the times when we, we don't turn away, but we turn towards sin, right? Jesus on the cross died for the times that we turn away from God, we doubt. Jesus died on the cross for all the times that, that we turn away from the truth of God's word. Jesus died for all the times that we turn away from pain and, and just go for the immediate fun. Jesus died on the cross. And he didn't turn away from the cross. He turned toward it. So that you and me, we would be forgiven. Jesus came to defeat the devil. And as proof of that, he did something we sometimes forget about. Jesus descended into hell. You know, we talk about that in the Apostles' Creed, but do you know why he did that? It wasn't to pay for our sins. He did that on the cross. First Peter says he went and preached to the spirits in prison. Jesus went to hell because he had something to say. In the book of Colossians, it talks about Jesus, Jesus um, triumphing over them by the cross, that, that he made a public spectacle of them. Let me put it this way. How many of you are Cub fans? Raise your hand if you're Cub fans. Come on. Okay? All right, so a few years ago, when they won the World Series after over 100 years, right? How many of you went downtown Chicago for that celebration? Anyone here went to that? It looked like this. If you went to that, you were part of the seventh largest gathering of human beings in the history of the world. Four million people, over four million. The largest single gathering in the history of the United States. That was a celebration of a victory, wasn't it? So I want you to think of that when you think of Jesus going to hell. Because Jesus going to hell was a celebration of victory. He went to hell. He had defeated the devil. 
He said, I won. And then he turned his back on the devil and left. And the devil could not grab on him. The devil could not hold him. The devil could not stop him. Jesus won. So, when we look at Jesus being tempted by the devil here, right, we fully understand that this side of heaven, we're still going to be tempted. You breathe, you're going to be tempted. So what can we learn about how to deal with those temptations? Well, look what Jesus did, okay? And I think this is important. Jesus did not defeat the devil. He didn't turn his back on the devil by using his power as God. I mean, last week we saw him transfigured in his glory. He could have just brushed the devil aside, but he didn't do that. Instead, he turned his back on the devil as, as a human. And I think one of the reasons was to show us what we can do when we're tempted. So what did Jesus do? Each time the devil tempted him, what did he do? He quoted the Bible back at Satan. Every time. So, children, that's why you memorize some Bible passages. It's to help you when those temptations come, which, hey, they come, right? You breathe, you'll be tempted. That's why maybe for us adults, it's not a bad thing to, to memorize some passages too. Although, you know, I know it's hard. It's, all you have to do is get, get an app on your phone and pops up a Bible verse every day and just read through it. You don't have to memorize it word for word, but just be familiar with it because it'd be surprising how much that passage might pop in your head the rest of the day at just the right moment when you need it. And of course also, if you want to be equipped more to, to turn your back against temptation, the more you are in God's word, the more you will be equipped. So encouragement is there to, to keep coming to church and, and hearing God's word, to, to be in a group Bible study and study it together, to be it in your personal life, whether that's at, at home or, or during lunch break at work or wherever you are. Because the more we have God's word in our life, the better equipped we will be to turn our back on those temptations. So on this day, this um, turning point for Jesus, we saw him turn away from the devil in complete victory. Victory which he gives to us. Until we are at that place of victory, until we are in heaven with him and his glory, we breathe, we'll be tempted. So my friends, since Christ is victorious, turn away from those temptations. Use God's word. Turn to God for that forgiveness when we fail, which we will. And keep on pushing, keep on struggling, keep on striving to turn away. Because one day, we won't turn, we'll be taken to be with Jesus forever. Until then, brothers and sisters in Christ, God bless you as you turn away. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, which transcends our human understanding, guide and guard your hearts and minds until life eternal. Amen. Let's join together in confessing our faith. We use the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. 
he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, we'll gather our offerings uh, to honor and glorify our God. If you're visiting with us, please don't feel obligated to put something into the plate. You are our guest. Um, if you want to, you're certainly welcome to. We do certainly ask, though, everyone, please um, get one of these green cards that are in the, the wood rack here and uh, hand, uh, fill those out, one per family. Hand those cards then toward the center aisle, and the ushers will gather them after they've gathered the offering. has the fine word the cross has the fine word sorrow may come in the darkest night but the cross has the fine word there's nothing stronger nothing higher Nothing greater than the name of Jesus All the honor, all the power, all the glory To the name of Jesus In our prayers this morning, we include uh, several special prayers. We include a, a prayer for Tim Miller, uh, who, had, who uh, Illinois Lutheran has called to be the executive director. We also include a, a prayer for Carol Palm, who will be having hip replacement surgery this coming week. And then we also include a prayer for the Dienick family. I don't know if you've heard about this. One of our families, uh, Rob and Michelle Dienick and their four children, 
were in a car accident in Michigan as they were going to visit friends. Um, Michelle, the mom, died in the accident. Um, all four kids are in the hospital, although it um, certainly seems like they, um, their injuries will, they will recover from. Rob, the dad, had surgery yesterday on his leg. There is some um, head injury, but it seems like, uh, God willing, he also will recover. So we certainly include a prayer for the Dienick family. Please stand for those prayers. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, first we ask for your blessings on Tim Miller, whom we have called to be the executive director of Illinois Lutheran Schools. As he now has this decision of where to, to serve, uh, where he is now, or to come here to Crete, Lord, we ask you to bless him with wisdom and knowledge and understanding that he can figure out where he can best use the gifts you've given him. And Lord, also we ask for your healing on Carol Palm. Grant her not only a, a successful hip replacement surgery, but then grant her recovery. And Lord, may it go well and quick that she may soon return and rejoin us in worshiping you here. And finally, Lord, we ask for your blessings on the Dienick family as they mourn the loss of Michelle, the mom. Lord, grant not just healing to their bodies, but healing that um, in this time of tragedy, they not only see your love and feel it and, and put their trust in you, but Lord, grant them peace that only you can give. Now, Lord, hear us as we come to you with our own private prayers. And Lord, we also ask you to hear us as we join in singing the Lord's Prayer. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. In Christ alone my hope is found He is my light, my strength, my song This cornerstone is solid ground 
burn through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. Christ alone, the took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died. Satisfied for every sin, on him was laid. Here in the death of Christ, I live. There in the ground, his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain. Yeah. Uh-huh.